All right, running four gigs on the uh, Intel 960. And this is on a gigabit X or GA dash X58A dash UD5. Uh, so it's on the old X58 chipset. So I'm about to swap it out for one of the server Xeons. I'm gonna swap it out uh, here in a couple of days. I've got a uh, Xeon X5675 and I just want to run the test on this for Signbench. Road score was a uh, 586 and it should be around the same. So this is not a huge overclock, but it's really stable. I'm using uh, 1333 RAM. Got the RAM overclocked to 1336. Uh, it didn't want to. I didn't play with loose timings too much, but so I didn't really want to push it. But this is really stable here, so I'm keeping it how it is. We get done with this. I'm going to reboot, and we'll look at the BIOS. This is kind of slow too because I've still got a ancient graphics card on there. I've got a GTX 460. So the plan is to upgrade to the Xeon X56. We'll beat the score by a couple of points. 589. Okay. Alright. Gonna take a look at the BIOS now. So, like I was saying, the plan is to go to the X56 uh, uh, 75. You can pick those up. They used to be when they first came out somewhere around 2,200 or so. Uh, you can still get them new for around 1,500 bucks. You can get them uh, where they've been babied all their life, coming fresh out of an old server uh, for about 150 bucks, and you can clock them easily to 4.2. There's a lot of people that get 4.6, 4.8. Some people even can get more out of them. I've got a decent little water cooling system in here. I'm just going to push for 4.6. I want something that's going to be real stable. And like I said, I've got the old graphics card, so. We're going to have to upgrade that to something new. We're looking at the uh, NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti. It just came out a couple of days ago. So between that and... Okay, I forgot. Okay, we're in the BIOS. Let me readjust the camera. I forgot that it pops up on this one. Okay. Grab the keyboard. Try to see what I'm doing. Okay. Advanced frequency settings. It's 24 multiplier. Most everything is on auto. Down here to the uh, BCLK, we've got a uh, uh, base clock, or whatever. We got 167. 166 is good too. 167 is going to push you over the 4.0 though. Uh, you do 166, then your RAM with a uh, 8 to 2 or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, 8 to 2 keeps the RAM at 1336 uh, 
if you do this on 166, then your RAM's going to be at 1333. Uh, so it won't be overclocked. Right now it's overclocked by, you know, 3 hertz or whatever. So it's like nothing. Uh, pretty much I've got everything else on auto. Auto here. So memory multiplier. 8. So I got my stable 1336. I got that 167. A lot of people boost this up to around 200 or so, but uh, they've got better RAM. They've got 1600 RAM or 1886 or whatever it is. Uh, with me having 1333, I'm keeping it 167 and uh, just doing a 24 multiplier. Uh, going here to CP Core features, I've got turbo off because that would boost it up to 4.1 or 4.2, whatever it is boost your first core or whatever and I don't want it boosted. Uh, I just want this steady uh, steady voltage the whole time rather than the voltage to be fluctuating. Uh, so you can see what I got. This you can turn on if you want to, the enhanced hop. Uh, I've just got it off. So you definitely want to turn the, turn the turbo off though. Okay, so now that we, that we looked at that, we're already going to go and look at advanced memory settings. So there's where you can set your multiplier of whatever you got. So like, say we change it to 10. Well, now my RAM's running at 1670. I could probably run 1670, but I'd have to adjust the timings rather than 77720. I mean, rather than 99 uh, 99924, I'd have to do like. 10, 10, 10, 24, or maybe even uh, 10, 10, 10, 27, or whatever it is, or uh, 11, 11, 11, 27, or 11, 11, 11, 30, or something like that to try to uh, do the looser timing so that we don't be SOD when we try to start up. When you try to start up, it screens your RAM or whatever, and it would just reboot on you. Uh, it's because of it, because it wasn't stable. So, like I said, I've only got it on the 8. Uh, so to do this, you go in your channel, channel timings or whatever, and you change it to whatever your is spec for your RAM. In this case, 99924 spec for my RAM, and 1333 spec for my RAM. Like I said, I've barely got it overclocked. It's basically run in spec. Uh, standard is 1333. Okay, uh, performance enhance, you've got turbo and extreme. I keep it on standard because we're overclocking. Uh, it has better stability when you've got it here. So this is this is the way I've got my RAM. Now here's the advan uh, advanced uh, voltage. I've got my CPU V-Core bumped up. Uh, the original you can see it was 1.275. I've got it at 1.35. 1.35 is fine. Uh, the lower you go, the better, but this is fine. And I've got my QPI at 1.295, and everything runs perfectly stable. Now here's where you also adjust your D, your DRAM voltage. This will be according to the spec of your RAM. Also, uh, I'm running 1.5 on here. Uh, you don't want to go above 1.65 on these old X58 boards. Uh, you can end up burning up. Uh, I believe it's the bus that burns up because they're not really, uh, or it burns the CP, uh, CPU because it's like a they share the same, but I don't know how it goes. That's way above my head. Anyways, I know that try to shy away from anything over 1.65. I like to stay at 1.5. Like I said, uh, I just wanted to match my RAM up to what it was normal and didn't mess with it. Miscellaneous, you don't really have anything in here. So uh, this, this is basically it, you know. I've got 1.295, everything else on auto. I've got my DRAM set here, otherwise you leave it here. You don't do that. Uh, auto, it's, you might fluctuate. I want to leave it solid. I want to leave it a solid, stable 1.5. I don't want it fluctuating. Same for these, 1.295, 1.35. Everything's perfectly stable that way. So, you got a different stick of RAM or whatever. You'd have different timings or whatever. Say your RAM's 1600 or whatever. Well, then you could try this right here, you know. Or you could try something else too, you know, you could try uh, a higher frequency. You'll notice up here that your frequency will change as you do it. So like a, 
uh, we're at 1.67 so we're gonna go let's say 1. Point, uh, a lot of times people bring this down to around 20 I'll bring this up to let's say 200 or 200 or 201 or something. Okay. Oh, well now your memory say your memory showing 2,000, so you'd have to go down. So now you've hit eight, and well now you got 1,600 grand. You could even boost this up one one or two more. So that's another possibility. You have it around 20. Let's say you even do. Uh, oops, oops. Let's say uh, I'm using page up and page down to quickly change these. If somebody could try to do this for uh, 20 or 20.1. Uh, okay, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with where we're at. Uh, I like to do 24 because of the RAM that I'm using. So, uh, 24. In the case somebody's going to try to boot with uh, 4.2, right now it says 4.8. There's no way it's going to start with 4.8. Uh, 4.2. You'd probably have to go in there and change the voltage setting where I've got mine on 1.35. You'd have to bump that up probably 1.375 or 1.4 or something. But well, I'm going the wrong direction. This thing. We're taking this to 167. Okay. And I've got my 8 on there. My 24 right there. That's how I got to set up. Like I said, did you do the other way where you had your. Uh, 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 you clock at 200 in your multiplier, say on 20 or 21, then you might would go into your voltage settings and crank this up from the 1.35 to 1.375, and maybe come up with this 1.32 or something. I don't know. And then once you find out that yeah, it's stable there, then you would slowly try to bring those down until it's no longer stable. So. Uh, we're just going to exit. We're not going to save any of this. So you got your RAM clock too high. Then right here in the lower left, when it goes to read your RAM, right after this DMI pool, right here where it's doing it now, it wouldn't find your RAM. It'd say something about DRAM something something and then it reboot on you automatically. And that's when you'd have to go back into your BIOS and uh, underclock it or play with looser timings and stuff like that. Now it's taking me so long to boot in the Windows because uh, I've got a standard hard drive. I don't have an SSD. So you can see the Intel is running at 42 degrees Celsius. And we got the uh, H110 IGT uh, closed loop cooling system on it. I think works awesome. So we're going to run Prime. I'm not going to run Prime right now. I'm going to run. Because I got too much stuff still loading up. I don't want to make this video too long. I'm gonna pull up uh, Cinebench or Cinebench again. We're on it second time. See it's going. It 
This is with the fans on quiet mode. Well, I've got one fan on balance, the one that's going 2000 RPM. But I've got a 1300 fan, it's on, uh, it's on quiet mode. So you can see it overload, it, you know, it, it, you know, it doesn't really even get over 60. Uh, really pushing some stuff. It'll get to, uh, 63, 65, something like that. But, uh, the color actually works really good. So... So you can see we're about to wrap up just a little bit. So we should see that fade off soon. Alright, it just finished. You can see the temps dropped almost immediately down to 43.8. And then it'll continue to cool. And probably get back back in 41, 42. Thanks for watching.